Hello, thank you for joining this webcast, which is part of our series on the impact of sitting and health. I am Alistair Freeland, and with me today is Akin Kunle Oye Sumefun from the School of Kinesiology and Health Science at York University in Toronto. Akin, it's great to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me and uh, having this opportunity to speak with you and your audience and share my research. Akin, we are hearing a lot recently about how technological advancements are facilitating more and more sedentary work. And there are also reports that the COVID-19 pandemic has seen, uh, we've seen less physical activity. Now, the American Heart Association also recently called for interventions to reduce sedentary behaviors and its effects. So you looked at the effects of treadmill desks on energy expenditure and sitting time compared to conventional desks. Can you first share with us what your study showed? Thank you for the question, Alistair. Um, so before I, before I share the actual results, I'll just uh, give a bit of a context that um, some of the, the inspiration and motivations for this uh, study. Um, so myself as an early career researcher in epidemiology, and cardiometabolic health, I've been in intrigued by the decline in, in the prevalence of occupations that uh, in, the private, in the private sector that require purposeful physical activity. And this has been a decline on the past 50 years or five decades. So this led to a reduction in energy expenditure of about 100 calories and also changes uh, to the work environment coinciding with that low energy expenditure and contributing to increased sedentary activity. I was intrigued by uh, that relationship. And I was also intrigued by the innovations in the direct measurements of movement behaviors. For example, pedometers, accelerometers, um, wearable devices, and even smartphones. And therefore, I was excited to work with a team of scientists and, uh, and, and my co as my co-authors, so uh, Zara Zizi, Chris Ardern, and Michael Rotundi of the School of Kinesiology and Health Science at York University. And through that experience, to address the issues with prolonged sitting behaviors during the COVID public health crisis, with the public health measures in place, remote working could become routine. And so we wanted to evaluate the potential health effects of using a treadmill desk on energy expenditure on, and reducing sitting time and cardiometabolic risk factors among sedentary working adults. So our study showed that among the 13 relevant studies that we found, six in the workplace, um, seven in the laboratory, and pulling 351 participants. We looked at the analysis, so we did a, an analysis of the laboratory and work -based, workplace setting. In the laboratory-based, uh, simulated laboratory-based setting, we saw an increase in energy expenditure of about 105 calories per hour. So this is analogous to pushing a baby stroller. In, in terms of uh, equivalency. As well, we saw an, a small increase in the metabolic rate. So uh, of about five milliliters per kilogram per minute. So the relative metabolic rate among the treadmill desk users compared to the sitting condition. Now in the analysis of the workplace setting itself, we saw a reduction in sitting time over a 24 hour period of about a minute and uh, 1.7 minutes, so just under two minutes per hour among the users of treadmill desks compared to the sitting condition. And we also assessed uh, blood pressure and other metabolic outcomes, but found um, no evidence of statistical significance. Overall, the key message was that, the, that we did see a potential that the treadmill desks offer a feasible and effective intervention for increasing energy expenditure and metabolic rate and reducing sitting time while performing work-related tasks. 
However, again, just the caveat that indeed more work is needed in this area to increase generalizability and to different work settings and to further evaluate the impact on cardiometabolic health. In particular, I think future studies uh, will be needed to understand how the long-term the long-term treadmill desk use may actually impact other, um, how do I call it, harder health outcomes, uh, like the development of cardiovascular diseases or other uh, chronic diseases, and whether these micro changes in the workplace can have positive effects on other lifestyle factors. And we've seen now offices with standing desks, but also more and more so, um, that certain offices are uh, equipped with stepping devices or pedal machines and even these treadmill desks that they are you know they they start to be introduced so if i understood you correctly you said more research is needed so it's probably too early to say that the higher costs associated with equipping the offices will be offset by the potential health benefits right so we're, we're that's exactly right um it might be too early to tell. Um, however, it is, it is wonderful that more offices are conscious about movement behavior paradigms and finding value in, in innovative technologies. I mean, we do see, for example, many multinational corporations or big tech companies have designed their, their, their large campus-like work settings around movement behaviors. And I think this trend is uh, as it relates to the well-being of, of the workforce. So I think there's a renewed interest reignited by the, by the global pandemic as individual perspectives have changed or have shifted to working from home. Prior to COVID, there was already interest in the global health burden associated with, with sedentary, sedentary activities, sedentary behaviors. But we now know from the literature, including the American Heart Association, that sedentary activity is, it's, is associated with cardiovascular and cardiometabolic health outcomes, as well as premature mortality. However, most recommendations are that adults you know, maintain a physically active, purposeful activity, whether it's 150 minutes per week uh, or or 75 minutes of vigorous, more purposeful activity. We know that these recommendations have not always addressed that, that relationship specifically. And so that's one of the rationale, the reasons for wanting to explore this further. So we're starting to see more important public health messaging around sedentary behaviors here in Canada, as well as in uh, Australia. And, and I think to, to further answer your question, I think that investments in innovation uh, can lead to uh, lower healthcare costs and will have cost savings. And can you maybe also speculate how we could motivate or incentivize people to use treadmill desks if they are available to them? Yes. Um, Indeed, I think there is a gap between the research on, on treadmill desks and its application in the work setting. As it relates to the treadmill desks, I think it raises interesting questions about the economic benefits. So some of the questions that can be uh, asked include whether the intervention improves health and well-being of the workforce, whether it reduces absenteeism or sick leave among employees, and whether the changes mentioned translate to higher productivity and lower healthcare costs, therefore potential economic benefits of the workplace uh, health intervention. So overall, I think that there, there needs to be a workplace health promotion, which highlights the net benefits of uh, the net benefits, net benefits for individuals who are unable to engage in more purposeful activity. So I'm reminded by a, uh, a lecture, uh, a video, um, I think it was on YouTube by uh, Dr. James Levin, who's uh, a world-renowned expert in this field of, uh, of um, occupational movement behaviors. And he, 
it was on the, the, the idea of um, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, where a low NEAT equals more sitting, and a high is called NEAT, N-E-T, N-E-A-T, pardon me. So a low non-exercise activity thermogenesis equals more sitting, and a high um, non-exercise activity thermogenesis is, equates to more walking. And so the idea that simply interrupting long bouts of sitting with short bouts of slow walking, so less than two miles per hour, burns an extra 100 calories per hour is really intriguing to me and, and could be used as a, a start, as the starting point for a conversation for individuals in the office. And I think employers and employees may see value in that, in that behavior change. Um, more people now have better tools to, to track their, their activities. And this is a form of intervention in itself that can provide positive feedback in, in the workplace. And employees can be encouraged to, through prompts, to make sure that they're getting a certain percentage of their day in a particular range, or whether it's uh, the cadence or the, the total steps in, uh, in their physical activity. Do you think that there's also opportunity maybe to have these treadmill desks in, in meeting spaces rather than fixed in certain working locations and that a meeting could be held actually, you know, accompanied with multiple people doing physical activity at the same time or that you even, I don't know, actually go for a walk as part of a smaller meeting um, if, the, if the office location permits it? Yes, I think that would be a great idea. Maybe I'll, I'll start with the first part of your question. Uh, in terms of the meeting meeting um, spaces, that would be, it may not be suitable for all organizations uh, or some organizations, pardon me. As it relates to the meeting rooms, I think there needs to be a balance between perhaps the occupational health and safety aspect and, and the work health, workplace uh, health promotion. And overall, I do see treadmill desks occupying common spaces at the, at the office or study rooms or even home offices. Also, workplaces could make small adjustments that can allow people to make small changes to their otherwise sedentary workday. For example, incidental activities could include taking the stairs to the meeting room um, instead of the elevator or walking to a centralized printing or centralized recycling bin instead of one closest to you. So maybe one maybe in a centralized location or further away. So little, little steps like that. And to answer the second part of your question, I think absolutely an alternative could be engaging in walking meetings um, if the office location permits it. Again, large organizations like universities have been doing this for a very long time, holding office meetings while taking a walk outside. And I'll just add that with, with regard to the, again, the challenges and, and the opportunities of, uh, of COVID, people may have adopted more healthy behaviors and you know, like taking short walks to, to break up their day or having phone calls instead of at their desk while they're walking. And, and that the, 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 the culture of the workplace might also have changed as a result of the um, public health measures. And it's difficult to predict, but companies may be able to use the, the post-COVID return to work as a pivot to emphasize these positive changes and show, show how more flexible they can be by being more focused on the worker and the worker's well-being. Great. Akin, thank you so much for your time and all your answers. Best of luck for your further work. Thanks. Thank you very much for the opportunity again to, uh, to speak to you and uh, speak on this platform. And thanks for having me.